So this was a big, big catch for him. And he lost a number of men. It was a very, very difficult uh, period for him. And he said, he, I said, well, what happens to him now, to the al-Qaeda in Iraq and Bargai? And the Navy SEAL said to me, well, you know, we can keep him locked up for maybe a year, but after that, he'll be out. Um, so he said to me, uh, I don't know if we're doing the right thing, if there's something right or wrong in our strategy here, because inevitably we're just delaying, we're just delaying the inevitable uh, problems down the road. So I think we would strongly urge the candidates to consider that um, uh, that opportunity cost of spending another six or nine hundred billion. Can I pick up on the point that you made that we're spending about you know one out of two dollars spent in the world on defense? The point is that uh, we are now spending so much money on weapons that don't work against enemies that don't exist. Uh, the Cold War is over, but we haven't really changed our defense posture, how we're spending money. Uh, we could spend less and get more security. So it's not a question of security. It's a question of spending money intelligently. Well, it, but isn't it true that throughout the history of the United States, wars have been the means by which uh, certain sectors of the American economy actually get government financing to develop their technology that they then turn into profit once the war ends. And, and you know, for instance, when I see Boeing creating the, the virtual fence along the border, where did they get that technology from, if not from back in the Persian Gulf War and previous wars that they developed? Uh, uh, so that you, it's almost like the arms manufacturers looking for government subsidy for their new technological development. Well, the question is, it would be much more efficient to directly subsidize them to develop the technologies that we need. Right now, there's a you know, major global problem, global warming. Mm -hmm. If they use some of the ingenuity to create, that they've been using to create smart bombs, mm -hmm. to create smart technologies, clean technologies, uh, we'd all be a lot better. I, and except, you know, I think direct spending is, makes a lot more sense than doing it this very roundabout way. Just but you wouldn't get the taxpayers to finance it unless you had an enemy that you had to unite against on the exterior. Well, in the the world, same there, there is a problem <laughs> of, of saving the planet now. I mean, I think that's a pretty big, <laughs> big threat. Joe Stiglitz, you mentioned Halliburton. Talk more specifically about these core Corporations, of course, Halliburton, vice president's company. Uh, well, I mean, one of the big issues here is how you let contracts. Um, you know, I think, as I said earlier, that privatizing the military makes no sense. You know, there are certain things where the private sector should be involved, certain things that should be run by the government. And throughout history, one of the things which is not good to privatize, one of the things that should be run by the government is the military. Uh, it's not a voluntary interaction. Uh, you know, if you produce a good uh, that consumers want, uh, that's where the private sector does very well. But the interactions between Blackwater and the people in the street in Iraq are not voluntary interactions. It's, it's not where the market works well. So, in general, privatizing of the military makes no sense. But if you're going to do privatizing, you want to do it efficiently. And there you want to have competitive bidding. But the Bush administration has over and over again used sole source contracting, and it's even worse than that. Often these are cost plus contracts. So they're sole source, cost plus, and cost plus, what does that mean? They get re reimbursed for whatever they spent plus. Meanwhile, one of the things that uh, we discovered was that the number of auditors has actually gone down. So while the number of contracts has gone up, estimated over 100,000 contractors, the number of auditors has gone down. And not surprisingly, the incidence of waste, fraud, corruption has gone way up. And you see that in the stock market price. You know, if this were a competitive market, they wouldn't be making much profits. But the fact that their stock prices have done so well says there have been a lot of profits in this war. Yeah, and if I could just Linda jump in here, um, this raises one of the other real problems with the war, which is how it has been financed. Um, the administration has has 
and this is the first war that has ever been financed in this way, has financed the entire war with these so-called emergency supplementals. Now, emergency supplementals circumvent the normal budget process and the normal budget caps, and they're intended for situations like Hurricane Katrina, where you want to get the money so quickly to the area that you don't have time to actually scrutinize the money in detail. But we've had now five years, 25 emergency supplementals. Now, what does this mean? This means that the budget folks of both parties in the Congress uh, and in the, the Congressional Budget Office and other places don't have time to actually look at, well, for this particular task, how much does it cost to get it done? So it's absolutely inevitable that you would have profiteering, corruption, cost overruns for these huge contracts, which are let with virtually no scrutiny whatsoever. You end your book, The Three Trillion Dollar War, The True Cost of the Iraq Conflict, with the chapter, Learning from Our Mistakes, Reforms for the Future. What are the remedies right now? Joe Stiglitz. Well, there are actually a whole set of reforms. We divided them into two categories, one in terms of how we treat our veterans. The other one is how we approach the budgetary process, the information process. So, for instance, one of the recommendations is a year, you know, if you're going to go fight a war that lasts for more than a year, you can't use emergency appropriations. If you're using emergency, it's a statement, things aren't going the way you planned. You ought to give a statement to Congress, why were we wrong? Where do we go wrong in our plans? Secondly, we think it's absolutely imperative that Americans have the information to know what, 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 what this is costing them. Uh, it doesn't determine whether you make, how you, you know, whether you go to war or not. But it's in a critical piece of information, and it has to be comprehensive. It has to be based on not only the cost today, but the cost in the future, um, the cost of the veterans, disability, uh, the cost hidden in all the other departments. Social Security disability payments are going to be going up by tens of billions of dollars. So you, you want a comprehensive budgetary cost, but you also want to know what are the costs to the rest of the economy because there's an incentive to push costs from the budget to the rest of the rest of, the, uh, of, of society. If the VA doesn't have enough money, people are going to wind up, if they can afford it, buying some of this themselves. Because you save money on body armor, families that could have went out and buy, bought the body armor. The cost to our society is the same. In fact, the cost of society is worse forcing it on to individuals because some of them couldn't afford it. You support an immediate withdrawal from Iraq, yet you say you would support a Democrat uh, candidate for president. Why? That's voting against your views. They're not calling for immediate withdrawal. Well, uh, the point is, we have a choice uh, between uh, an, a, what I would call a quick withdrawal and being there for 100 years. Uh, if we have 100 years, this $3 trillion number uh, is just, uh, you know, we're, we're assuming here a, a fairly quick scale down of our uh, activities over the next decade. Uh, but we're, we're, we're saying by 2017, that's the end. Whereas, uh, when we do our $3 trillion calculation, if you're talking about McCain's, you know, 100 years, we're there for 100 years, we're talking about an order of magnitude larger. And I think the critical issue in writing this book is one has to make that decision. Is, say, if we're going to be here for another 100 years, is that the best way of increasing our overall security? I want to thank you both for being with us in this national broadcast exclusive. Uh, Joseph Stiglitz and Linda Bilmos's book is The Three Trillion Dollar War, The True Cost of the Iraq Conflict. Joseph Stiglitz, the Nobel Econ uh, uh, Ec Economics Laureate, professor at Columbia University, Linda Bilmos, professor at Harvard's Kennedy School of Government. And that does it for our broadcast. Democracy Now! is produced by Mike Berkshire, Fabio Del Caduce, Aramate Angeli Comet, Jeffrey Hagerman, Steve Martinez, Nicole Salazar, Robbie Karen, Mike DeFilippo, Miguel Nagara, Peter Curry's our engineers. You can get the DVD of today's broadcast at our website, democracynow.org. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Thanks for joining us.